Hey guys, let's take a little bit of time to talk about footwear. Footwear, super important guys. We're gonna talk about boots, <clears throat> we're gonna talk about socks, and we're gonna talk about gaiters. Okay, so let's talk about footwear. But first, wait, but first, don't let anybody tell you what specific brand of boots you need to use. Don't, that's what drives me insane. You know, you watch these reviews on TV and they're all, you know, sponsored hunters or, you know, gear stores, okay? And they all say, you gotta buy this boot. It's the best boot out there. You'll hunt better, you'll be better. Uh, God will take you into heaven faster. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. You know, it's, we all know who's bought and paid for, guys. So it's really important, just try different boots. Try different socks. Try different combinations, best you can. Go to the big box stores, guys. Go to little mom and pop stores. See as many different and try as many different boots on as you can. Super, super important. Okay, but but before we go there, uh, let's talk a little bit about different boot types. Different boot types, not brand specific, uh, but different boot types. Okay, let's start off with this boot. Okay, we're gonna start biggest to smallest. Rubber boots, rubber boots. Okay, rubber boots. Uh, I actually bought these like 10 or 15 years ago thinking, you know, uh, when I'm hunting coos deer from this tree stand, uh, I need to be as scent free as possible. Yeah, okay. Rubber boots are scent free. <clears throat> they don't have a lot of scent. Uh, but you can't walk forever in these things. Uh, and I learned a long time ago that uh, when it comes right down to it, coos deer, as much as we want to say that they are super weary and, some, and everything, um, you don't need to wear rubber boots when you're walking in and out of a stand. I've had coos deer step in my tracks uh, with regular tennies on my way to and from a stand. Okay, <clears throat> so rubber boots, these things are good and I've used them more often than anything for uh, um, in the winter when I'm playing around with kids, running around the mountains, or, or when I'm fishing, small creeks, it's easier to use these boots than to put on waders. The good thing about these is sometimes they come super, super insulated and they can keep your feet warm. So again, rubber boots, we don't use them too often here in the Southwest. Uh, they do have their places, but um, yeah, rubber boots. <coughs> Boom, cowboy boots, okay, cowboy boots, if that's what you got, that's what you can afford, that's what you're comfortable with, go ahead and use cowboy boots. Well, who am I to say anything? Except for apparently I got something going on. Apparently I walk a little bull-legged or something. Oh, one thing, one caveat though with cowboy boots, no slick bottoms, no square toes. Okay, elk no guys, elk no. No square toes, okay? Don't wear the sun boots you're going to rodeo nights in, to the mountains. Here's more of a traditional boot, okay? It's got this uh, higher support here in the back. It's leather. It's got this rubber front, really good traction on the bottom. The thing I like about this is puncture resistant, puncture resistant. So if you're hunting uh, where there's cactus or there's rocks, uh, you're not gonna get a cactus in the toe, okay? It's just gonna bounce off. Okay, so that's the good thing about these. Also, um, it's got a much stiffer sole, much stiffer sole, so if you're like in the Floridas, or maybe on a sheep hunt, a Barbary sheep hunt. Uh, these are a lot more supportive of your feet. Okay, they are a lot heavier, a lot heavier. I would say these boots are kind of bomb proof, but man, they weigh a ton, weigh a ton. Another nice thing about these is you can have the sole replaced without having to replace the whole shoe, okay? I actually got a really good deal on these. Uh, these are like five, six hundred dollars boots. Um, I bought them off a dude on the internet for a lot, 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 lot less. So keep your eyes open for deals, guys. Whether it's steep and cheap, backcountry.com, um, camel fire. Every once in a while, you, every once in a while, you'll find really expensive boots at a good price. Okay. Here's kind of a boot that most people are using now. It's a lot more like a tenny, a high top. It's got a really good traction on the bottom. Thing is, this is Gore-Tex. This is Gore-Tex, so it's not puncture resistant. It's water resistant. It's light. Um, yeah, this is a good, a good boot. This is usually my go-to boot when I'm not in the cactus or the steep rocks. Okay, it's a good little boot. Super light. Okay, good boot. Good boot. Boom. <clears throat> Tenny shoes. Tenny shoes. 
they were really popular years ago. Salmon had some really good brands and all the guys in Utah were using them. And you know, Nike's got trail runners and this is an ultra. Um, personal experience, do not you for me, do not, I, I will never use tennis shoes again as a hunting specific boot shoe. They're just too flexible, too fragile. You feel every rock, you feel every stump, you feel every branch, you feel every root on these tenny style shoes. Man, your feet will be destroyed. You know, if you were to hunt the Floridas in these, your feet are gonna be gone, they'll be destroyed. Again, tenny shoes, um, although they're good for trails, they're relatively mild. I would not recommend these as a hunting specific shoe, especially if you're carrying a pack or if you got a pack meat out. So tennis shoes, probably not the best idea, okay? <clears throat> now let's talk about socks. Super important, very important. Super, super, super important. Bottom line, this is an early season sock over the calf. Good sock, doesn't get too hot, plenty of padding. <clears throat> Late season sock, more padding, doesn't get too cold. Both are over the calf. Most important thing about socks, other than them not being wool, or sorry, other than them not being cotton, make sure they're clean and dry every day. Clean and dry every day, personal experience. Clean and dry every day. After a while, if you have dirty socks, you will feel the dirt grinding away the skin on the bottom of your feet. So make sure they're clean and dry, non-cotton, okay? Now for the cool kids, gators. Gators, uh, are they required? Absolutely not. Okay, this is a shorter gator. Uh, maybe if you're running around the desert, they're important or good. Keep the dirt out of your foot, out of your, your shoe. Okay, if you're wearing shorts or if you're wearing pants, I guess. This is a lower gator. Some people like them to keep the dew um, off their pant legs and their socks. Okay, a gator, you know, I don't use these very often. I think those later lower gators are almost like a fashion statement. Uh, these taller gators are a little more functional. If there's snow, uh, it keeps your pants uh, dry. Um, if there's dew on the grass, it keeps your pants dry. Okay, these are pretty good. Uh, and the bottom line is you wanna keep your pants dry because if your pants get wet, your socks are gonna get wet. And then that, that wetness is gonna go down your foot and into your uh, into your foot. So yeah, so then your whole thing's wet and it's no fun, you're end up squeaking through the mountain with wet feet, not fun. So again, these gators, if it's snowing or if it's super, super dewy or whatever. Okay, so bottom line guys, don't let anybody tell you what to use. Um, try out different things. Just be aware, probably the most functional boots out there. Something like this. Okay, it's like a super, super rugged tenny. It's got good support. Relatively light, relatively light. Okay, water resistant. Or even something like this. It's just got a leather upper, waterproof. Um, very, very supportive. The only bad thing about these is these will get heavy on you. These will get heavy. Yeah, so those are my ideas, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon.